कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की इन द न्यूज टू नाइट एजुकेशन मिनिस्ट्री वोन्स बुलीज सेकेंड राउंड ऑफ वैक्सीनेशन इन अबाउट एट वीक्स and usp begins research into local kava from the studios of fbc suva edwin na pulo na ka fiji incidents of bullying are not only a concern for the education minister but also are raising eyebrows in the health sector there have been cases of bullying in primary and secondary schools but recent cases have been more prevalent in boarding schools pranita prakash reports students have even ended up in hospital The education ministry maintains there is no place for bullies in schools. You don't have a place if you're a bully. You don't have a place in the school system if you're a bully. You are wasting your time, you are wasting your principal's time, you are wasting your parents' time by engaging in this this kind of things. Health minister Dr. Ephraim Wangai Nambete says they don't want to see students coming in with injuries but the bigger worry is the mental impact on young Fijians. Talk to the child psychologist, you talk to the child psychiatrist. These are the means by which you can prevent a child from really achieving the best that they can achieve in life. And I think that's important that we must as a nation remember Uh, that we must uh, support our children the education minister says action will be taken against those who bully others if you bully any of your uh, students in the house, especially the prefects and stuff there's strict punishments for that your parents will have to come and take you home and then find you another school we don't want that 15 students were recently questioned and released by police for their alleged involvement in an assault The senior students aged between 16 and 18 had allegedly beaten up three junior students with a stick. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine will be administered after eight weeks of the first jab, says Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainambete. The first batch of 12,000 doses will be administered among 6,000 frontline workers who will undergo another round of vaccination to boost the efficacy of the vaccine. Ritika Pratap reports. These quarantine and border management workers will need to wait at least 10 weeks for their next jab of the AstraZeneca vaccine. So the first 6,000 will see their vaccines over the next uh, uh, few days, and then we'll keep the other 6,000 for them in about 8 to 10 weeks' time. And as the vaccines come in, uh, the doses come in. So, for example, you get another uh, 10,000 doses, then 5,000 will receive their vaccine. The other 5,000 doses will wait for them 8 to 10 weeks' time. The acting head at the WHO Silver Office, Dr. Akim Ali, says the next round of vaccination is essential because it triggers the necessary immune response. The recommendation for the two doses of jabs at the moment is to have them taken eight to twelve weeks apart, because um, the studies have shown that when they are t- given apart from that um, timeline, it increases the uh, effectiveness of the vaccine. The health ministry will then focus on vaccinating Fijians who are 18 years and above. We will begin uh, as planned with 18 and above, and as more evidence comes through uh, and we need to actually change that, we will change that accordingly. Dr. Wangai Nambete says more vaccination will be arriving in the coming months as Fiji works with development partners to procure the drugs. A combined $75 million has been set aside in the COVID-19 supplementary budget and the 2020-21 national budget. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The AstraZeneca vaccine will boost the confidence of frontline workers tasked with looking after COVID-19 patients. Lotoka Hospital's consultant anesthetist, Dr. Mara Vukivuki Seru, who is the first Fijian to be vaccinated, says this will also boost support staff. Kelly Vadala reports. All medical staff in the Western Division have come forward to receive their jabs. This includes the RFMF team, the hotel workers, the team stepped, uh, the hardworking team at the Nandi Airport. So knowing that they get, get the vaccine, even if they catch uh, COVID-19, they are rest assured that they will get very, very sick. Dr. Mara Bukivuki-Seru says the vaccine gives all Fijians a sense of security. 
So COVID vaccine, like I've mentioned, it it uh, will prov provide uh, some sort of a, a lead protection against the serious illness that's associated with uh, COVID-19. With the government working on easy access to health care, Prime Minister Warengen Bainmarama adds the vaccine will be administered well. Your government is committed to vaccinate all eligible candidates who are 18 years and over, according to the ministry's expert advice as soon as it's uh, physically possible. The Prime Minister says healthcare is a critical service key to a wealthy and economically productive nation. For now, 6,000 frontline workers continue to receive their vaccines. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Prime Minister Voreng Mbaini Marama this morning delivered a eulogy at the memorial service for former Papua New Guinea Prime Minister Sir Michael Somare. Mbaini Marama highlighted that Sir Michael was a great friend of Fiji and had a special friendship with our first Prime Minister, the late Ratusa Kamise Semara. The Prime Minister says the two shared the experience of leading their nations to independence. Mbaini Marama adds he would have dearly loved to be in PNG to commemorate the life of the Grand Chief but the challenges of COVID-19 make it impossible. This is what we need to remember to the friend. The Grand Chief was a true friend of Fiji. He stood by Fiji and he faced our own set of challenges, urging the international and regional communities to trust each other and respect our position. This is something we will never forget. Homegrown kava is becoming a lucrative commodity with growing interest from the international pharmaceutical industry. Kava co-founder John Sande says a large number of drug manufacturers are keen to purchase Fiji kava for medicinal purposes. Details with Josiah Nanunga. Kava is a viable industry, but local dealers need to upgrade their control and quality standards, sanitation as well as labeling. Quality controls in place. It, you know, with extracts, then it opens up additional markets, uh, particularly in the food manufacturing industry, in the nutraceutical industry, and also in the pharmaceutical industry. A growing number of pharmaceutical companies are buying local cover, and industry players say this is the beginning of something great. There's a growing interest there. I think we haven't hit the point where they've started to come and make big, you know, big purchases, but we hope that uh, we can continue to keep upgrade our standards and our quality out of Fiji to attract the bigger boys. Carbocorp has also invested in scientific research through a one-year scholarship USP student, Azaka Swami, to study cover. It be coming into a pharmaceutical product page later on in future, and that's going to be a driving um, um, aim for the, um, it can be a good aim for the company to actually proceed um, in terms of uh, creating a pharmaceutical product that can be beneficial for the people. Plans are also in place to produce cover tablets for people who participate in sports. Chosayena Nunga, FBC News. Up ahead, FNPF to begin new payouts and alleged attackers to take a plea. By today, Radio Fiji both Radio Fiji Rosu Tau. Radio Fiji 2, Teshki Dharka. Welcome back. The Fiji National Provident Fund will soon roll out a new phase of COVID-19 relief assistance. Acting Chief Executive Viliame Vondonaivalu says it will target voluntary members who to date have not received any assistance. They will be able to apply for a minimum of $100 to a maximum of $1,100 from their general account. Kritika Kumar has the details. Voluntary members need to have at least $135 in their general account to qualify. While we have been providing relief to members whose employment has been affected, there's a group of members who have been patiently waiting. These are our voluntary members. We will roll out the COVID-19 relief for our voluntary members from the first, April the 12th, 2021. The FNPF points out that these members will not receive any government top-ups. Phase 4 uh, was also a um, product that was run by FNPF alone. During Phase 4, there was no government support. Likewise, for voluntary, this will also be coming out from the member's general account only. There will be no top up Singh says the first three phases targeted the formal sector, which was the most affected by COVID-19. 
So likewise, the voluntary phase, they have also been doing inconsistent payments to the party. So there, the government felt that these people had actually, you know, they have other alternate sources of income. So they could be able to sustain themselves. That's why government felt that the immediate need was to put money uh, and support the people in the formal unemployment. The FNPF will close phase four of the COVID-19 relief assistance on the 31st of this month due to the low number of applications being received. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Two men who allegedly attacked three people at Mead Road Housing in Nambua earlier this year will take their plea on Monday. Tevita Mbandongo and Eroni Mbale appeared in the Suva High Court today. The two are jointly charged with one count of damaging property, one count of criminal trespass, two counts of grievous harm, one count of act with intent to cause grievous harm and one count of theft. It's alleged the two accused forced their way into a public rental board flat and attacked six people in January where two allegedly suffered knife wounds in the incident. Bandongo and Bale have been further remanded in custody. The matter has been adjourned to Monday. Fiji has joined five countries negotiating the first trade agreement that has climate change and sustainability at its core. The government, rather the agreement, pursues a plastic-free land and marine environment not only at national level but internationally as well. Korei Tandulala reports this was highlighted by Permanent Secretary for Commerce Shaheen Ali during World Consumer Rights Day. The Permanent Secretary says the agreement will allow Fiji to push for plastic elimination and protecting the environment. Instead of thinking it's just plastic, it's just a plastic bottle, I uh, think this will last in our oceans or be buried in the earth long after I am I'm gone, you are gone. Consumer Council of Fiji Chief Executive Sima Shandil says the agreement will help Fiji in the work towards eliminating plastic footprints. The high usage of plastic and disposal of uh, plastic by us consumers is having a very bad impact on our environment in the ecosystem. With the theme tackling plastic pollution, Fijians are urged to actively participate in the elimination of plastic in everyday life. If we want um, Fiji to remain a pristine, high-value tourism destination, then we as consumers must change our behavior. Fiji is the only country in the South Pacific that is part of the consumer international body which has sanctioned the awareness program on plastic pollution as a critical issue. It is also one of the only two Pacific island country that is part of the first trade agreement that has climate change and sustainability at its core. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. Students need to set goals to become successful leaders. While opening the Narere Primary School new Year 8 classroom earlier today, Permanent Secretary for Education Dr. Angela Jokhan said education is the key to prosperity. She says parents and teachers play a vital role in ensuring students have access to quality learning. You need to know that by working hard, you will succeed. You need to start to think about what you want to do when you grow up. And now to business with Whitney. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight, no new fees for market stalls. And improving biodiversity for sustainable growth. Stay with us. Bula. Bula FM, number two and seri. The local government ministry has clarified that there are no licensing fees to be imposed on market vendors as reported by the Fiji Times yesterday. Minister Pramila Kumar says the document that was sent out to the media highlighting certain licensing fee is not aligned with government policy. Kumar is urging Fijians to disregard the draft market regulation. Last year, as you, as you know, we have removed the business licensing fee. Why would we go ahead and introduce another licensing fee? We now join Sunifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The commodity-linked Aussie and Kiwi dollars traded close to one-week highs today as inflation fears faded away, sending Wall Street stocks to record highs. The number of Americans filing new claims for jobless benefits dropped to a four-month low last week as an improving public health environment allowed more businesses to reopen 
putting the labor market recovery back on track. Weekly employment data added to positive signals from the jobs market as President Joe Biden signed his 1.9 trillion pandemic relief bill into law. Meanwhile, the U.S. dollar weakened as coming bond markets lifted investor appetites for Asian currencies. Elsewhere, the European Central Bank left rates unchanged at 0% as expected, but did pledge to step up its pace of bond purchases to stem the rise in European bond yields and keep financial conditions steady. That's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Here the local exchange rates are set early this morning. While the Fiji dollar rose against the Chinese one, US dollar, PNG Kina and the Japanese yen, the Sangamali weakened slightly against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the Euro. Commodity prices were mixed. The price of oil rose a dollar to close at $65 a barrel. Gold dropped to close at $1,714 per ounce and silver closed down at $2601 an ounce. With wildlife populations declining in Fiji, the government has launched a community-based project to improve biodiversity. Environment Minister Dr. Mahand already says it is vital that Fiji takes a stand to protect the environment and resources from unsustainable trade and degradation. Jeshulal reports. <music> According to the minister, Fijians have to act to save the environment, including wildlife from unhealthy human activity and climate change. All this contributes to a biological resource base that we, our life is intertwined with. We cannot exist without the biological resources, without the biodiversity. Dr. Reddy says the preservation of biodiversity is paramount to ensure people are not jeopardizing the ecosystems. You, it's your, it's, it becomes your responsibility, your duty to protect these resources, to build resilience so that it can withstand any external or forces beyond <coughs> us such as natural disasters so that the future generations, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, can also benefit from the biological resources, the biodiversity. This uh, recreation of our ecotourism is not only for tourism, but also for the protection <coughs> of our environment and wildlife species. The ministry has launched a technical advisory partnership with Ambada Village to protect the wildlife species and to enhance biodiversity. Jeshulal, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney. Good evening. Ahead in sports, we have the latest from the Triple End Zone and sponsorship boost for Naju Rugby. This and more are coming up. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Winning the Blue Ribbon event in their last day of school is a special achievement for Anare Silo and Naomi Navunga. Silo stunned the crowd claiming the Blue Ribbon event in the boys' division for Lelin Memorial School, while Navunga took the girls' medal back to Sawani. It came as a surprise for Blue Ribbon winner Anare Silo. Uh, so many, uh, wasn't really the best time. It was like the third best time in the 100 meters finally, so... When I stepped out into the tracks, uh, yeah, I only had one, uh, one goal. It's either to win or to, show, break, uh, to set a new record. The youngster says the support of his parents was the key to his win. I wasn't really, too, uh, I wasn't really focused on my event, so yeah, most of the time I lagged. I didn't want to go for training, stayed home, I ate a bit too much, and uh, yeah. Heads off to them for always uh, trusting in me. Marked as the favorite in the senior girls 100 meters, Naomi Navunga knew she had to deliver. Forgetful. Forgetful. 
Okay, let's try how long that is today. We also stretches, we also spin, we support us. Principal and our staff. Sailor and Navunga won their second gold medals respectively in the 200 meters event. Nakasi High School came out firing in the triple end zone competition today, giving big names like Andi Lakombo School and Elin Memorial School a good run for their money. Nakasi fielded the largest number of athletes, about 100 in the two-day tournament. Karlin Tavi reports. One of the underdogs in the triple end zone today, Nakasi High School had a good outing, creating upsets in both the track and field events. Our major aim this year was for maximum participation in the zone and we really wanted to put a good team up so that we get uh, good athletes for the whole games. Nakasi High is hoping to be one of the top contenders in the Coca-Cola games as they were in the zone competition today. Every year we have participated, we have entered the whole games and uh, unfortunately we haven't won any medals yet and this year we are coming to medals. For Emmanuel Manasa, winning the school's first gold medal at the Triple N Zone has been a milestone achievement for him. Now the Namasi native will be out to win the school's first gold in the Junior Boys Discus event at the Fiji Finals. I'm still surprised that I not only won gold but also broke the zone record. This is my first time taking part and I'm happy with this achievement. Nakasi High School will field more than 30 athletes at the Coca-Cola Games next month. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. Naita Siri Bay Schools, Wainina Secondary School and Wainimala Secondary School dominated the long-distance events at the Triple N Zone at the NZ Stadium in Suva today. The two schools set two records in the 1,500 meters final of the sub-junior and senior boys events respectively. Karlini Tavi with the details. Watch him go! Taking part in his first triple N competition, Chemesa New Kula of Wainimala Secondary School set a new record in the senior boys 1,500 meters event. I did not participate in the junior and inter and this year I decided to give it a try and it all paid off. New Kula clocked a time of 4 minutes 36 seconds to beat the previous record of 4 minutes 41 seconds held by Wangdina Secondary School. I have always looked up to Mbanuve Tambakauboro and I hope to one day be like him, so I will work on ensuring that I get gold. The second record holder was set in the sub-junior 1,500 meters by Rossi Vela Matanimeke of Waindina Secondary School with a time of 5 minutes, 7.26 seconds. The Nokoro Tumbo in Ra native said he was coming with an intention to win, which he did. I am still surprised that I not only won gold but also broke the zone record. This is my first time taking part and I'm happy with this achievement. Other records broken were in the senior girls high jump by Andy Vakombo schools Yvonne Naleombao and in the 100 meters seats with ACS's Naomi Navunga setting a new record of 12.72 seconds. Carly Nitavi, FBC Sports. We now join Venina, who is live from the ANZ Stadium. Venina, a number of records were broken today. Who is the overall winner? Yes, Stanley, 15 records were broken here at the Triple N Zone, which had just finished behind me. I won't be able to mention all 15 records, but some outstanding records that have been, that we have witnessed today. One in the Senior Girls High Jump event, which was broken by three schools, Siteri Rauda of Andi Dakumbao School, Unaisi Kaulatonga of Lelin Memorial School, Naomi of Nakasi High School, all jumped a height of 1.35 meters, 35 meters rather, breaking the old record set by Coletta of Andi Dakumbao School in 2015. Coletta had jumped a height of 1.28 meters. Another interesting record uh, was broken in the senior girls 100 meters by uh, the Andi Dakumbao uh, School sprint queen Naomi Navunga who broke her own record which she set earlier in the heats. She clocked a time of 12.44 seconds in the final breaking the time she set earlier in the day which was 12.7 
72 seconds. Um, jumping onto the medal telly, the uh, uh, the girls from Andy Dakumbao School again dominated this year at the Triple N Zone with 37 gold, 29 silver and 18 bronze medal. Um, Wanyamala Secondary School came in second with 5 gold, 6 silver and 6 bronze medals with Naita Siri Secondary School settling for third place with 3 gold, 6 silver and 4 bronze medals. In the boys division, we still have the same remain, remaining um, the champions, the Lelin Memorial School boys, the boys from Davui Levu with 20 golds, 13 silver and 10 bronze medals. Nakasi High School came in second with 8 gold, 4 silver and 3 gold medals and Loma Ivuna High School with 4 gold, 6 silver and 6 bronze medals. Now, uh, the 15 records broken here at the Triple N Zone has set the bar for the schools competing uh, here. It has set the bar for the Fiji Secondary Schools Athletics Meet next month. So you can expect exciting competition coming up in the next few weeks and uh, on the build-up to the Fiji Finals. Tale. Thank you for that, Venina. Members of the Fiji Pulse Under-21 team will get a feel of international level training as the Fiji Pulse embarks on its first session with new coach Jenny Brazil. Some of the baby Pulls are part of the extended 25-member squad selected after the 2020 Digicel Reset Championship. Of the 25, 12 are also part of the Under-21 squad eligible for selection into the final World Netball or Youth World Cup. Carlin Tabi reports. With around 20 teams expected to compete, Netball Fiji will need to put together its best team with the help from new coach Jenny Brazel. Especially with the World Cup, uh, World Youth Cup at the end of the year, and so that's going to be an area we need to will need to look uh, a bit more into in terms of how do they get given the current situation with COVID. Following the success of the Reset Championship in November. Netball Fiji will be working on a similar tournament to give the under-21 team as much game time as possible before December. And we have talked about um, having other tournaments uh, to include the Fiji uh, A, the Fiji Pearls and the Fiji under-21 and maybe a Fiji men's sorry, a series. Grassroot development is something Brazil is passionate about and is hoping to incorporate what she has done for Australian club Firebirds into our netball system. It's World Youth Cup at the end of this year, but the next crop of World Youth Cup are probably our 16, 16 year olds that are out there. The Netball World Youth Cup was scheduled to be held in June but has been moved to December. Carlin Itavi, FBC Sports. The Nandi Rugby Union will be heading into the new season with good news following the signing of a number of sponsors. The defending champions of the Fairbrother Trophy will now have the support of a few sponsors to help them prepare. Nandi Rugby Union Chair Sekove Tuilakemba says the Vuvale partnership will be critical for the team, especially during a time when many are unemployed. The traditional sponsors of Nandi Rugby were Jacks of Fiji and McDonald's, but now there are nine other sponsors coming on board. I believe the Abu Valley families of Nandi, the Kai Nandi, are forming this partnership to rise above all kinds of difficulties and struggles that we go through every day. And the youth empowerment and sports empowerment is very vital to bring us together during these hard times. Rewa football is taking a cautious approach ahead of the Digicel Premier League clash against the Lotoka on Sunday. The loss to Suva in round one was a wake-up call for the Delta Tigers, who remains firm on hopes to win the league title. Accepting the loss in round one, the team hopes to bounce back stronger. It is one of the wake-up calls and the boys have uh, adjusted themselves accordingly. And hopefully that uh, this is the result they do not want to have anymore and they anticipate the loss and they come out firing against a lot of others. It won't be easy securing maximum points given the depth in the Lotoka team. Lotoka is a good team. Uh, it's a very well talented team. Coach uh, Maitani, uh, we need to be sharper in all uh, aspects. The Blues on the same page are wary of the potential of the Delta Tigers. Uh, have a lot of uh, good ball players in the team and uh, our home ground. And we hope to 
to have a good game with them. Rewa out for its first win faces Lautoko on Sunday at 4 p.m. at Churchill Park. That's it from sports tonight. In new media, a new drone that flies by itself, but it's not for enthusiasts. This and more after the break. Hola, we love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. And Angie is here now with tonight's weather. Hello to you and welcome to the weather world. The Great Friday has finally arrived. It was a wonderful sunny start throughout. Well, the weekend is here and that's what matters the most. Checking the other centers out, the West it had a beautiful day, the kind we mostly adore, super heated up. Eastwards from Pak Habarasuva, the day was great to be part of the triple N zones at the stadium. And up north, I think sunshine is actually lighting the month of March. It's giving out more sunnier spells. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, low tide at 12.32 a.m. with high tide at 6.46 a.m. Sunrise at 6.08. For tomorrow, going to the city or town, make sure to take your umbrellas as sunshine won't be in for long. Tomorrow's temps, Lambasa will be warm at 32 degrees, while the rest of the centers will be easy at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, it's sleep day anyway, so these showers will actually do us a favor and keep things cool. That's all the weather news from my end. Have a great weekend. It's back to Edwin. And in Fijian Pulse, we ask, what do you think of the level of competition in secondary school athletics after a lapse of 12 months? Most of the students, they prepare well. They've been doing their own training at home. They've been doing their own training uh, on their different schools. That's why the level of competition uh, now has been improved. They were uh, taking part in uh, the four clubs. Eh? The, the, Athletics Fiji, I think uh, they've introduced uh, the clubs for, for athletics for junior level as well. The level of competitions will be exciting. Students, teachers and parents, I'm sure, are looking forward to some good competition this year. All schools have been uh, preparing after one year of no athletics. I know all schools will be out to win this year. And recapping our main stories, Education Ministry warns bullies, second round of vaccination in about eight weeks and USP begins research into local kava. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister station Gold FM and to our poll question. This week we are asking, should more awareness be created on gender equality in Fiji? Visit our website to answer. And on to our shot of the day, sent in by Sioeli Dolati from a recent measles immunization campaign on Fulanga Island in the Lao Group. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos, email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our social media accounts including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again next week. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.